What is going on everybody on YouTube? Steve here with Rakin Profit coming back to you guys with another video. In this video, we're going to be talking about selling books on Amazon FBA for beginners explained in plain English. I know what it's like to want to start a business, whether it's clothing or it's eBay or when I started my YouTube channel or my Kindle business and you know anything else out there. I know what it's like to be new and to watch videos and listen to podcasts and you know take courses and everything sounds like it's in a different language right it sounds like so complicated like how am i going to do it you know you just get confused and you get kind of fed up and you don't get started so i'm going to do the best i can to explain this simply in 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 layman terms and just put it out there to you so you could really grasp it and understand it. So right next to me, I have a whole bunch of books. Uh, these are books that I had gotten for free from garage sales that I paid for at garage sales that I picked up from thrift stores and a couple books that I have laying around my house. So what we're going to do essentially is analyze these books together and we're going to talk about the different factors that you have to consider when you are buying books to sell on Amazon FBA. A little bit about me, I've been selling books on Amazon for over a couple of years now. Um, there were times where I was, you know, going crazy with it and, you know, I was on a 90 day road trip and I was buying and selling books like crazy and it was like, I was doing it every day. Nowadays I do it, you know, a couple times a week when I'm out at the thrift store or I'm at a garage sale, I'll scan books, I'll look for a couple and I'll, you know, I'll send in a couple boxes per month of books and I make some pretty decent money. I actually got my mother started selling books about uh, almost four years now and she does it part time, makes a couple thousand a month selling books. So if you're someone looking to make a couple hundred bucks or a couple thousand bucks selling books part time or even if you want to go full time, this video is going to be for you. So let's shout some people out in the comments and let's get started. What's up, Isaac? We got Cruise to 11 in the house. Hey man, Isaac, you were killing it at that meetup. I had to, I had to put you as the, um, as the the screenshot of the video, man. Hope you didn't mind that. But good to see you. Good to see you here. We got Mark Corbett in the house. Hey, what's going on, Mark? Good to see you, man. It was nice hanging out with you too. How's that Harley Davidson shirt treating you? Yes, I am on. There is picture. Hopefully, there is. Let me do a quick test. Hey, what's going on, Mark? Good to see you. Man. All right, sound is working all right. Cool. So let's dive into it, guys. Um, if you're new, Amazon FBA stands for Fulfillment by Amazon. And I recommend if you're going to sell books, to send them into the Amazon FBA warehouses. You can do some more research on that, but essentially what happens is you buy a book, say you pay a dollar for it. You use your phone to scan it, and I'm actually going to bring up an application right now that is called, let me find it, the Amazon Seller app. So if you're watching this, you're brand new, I want you to sign up for an Amazon account. I want you to download the Amazon Seller app, which is free, and I want you to start scanning some books around your house. So essentially what you do is you get the app downloaded, and this is it right here. It's got the little barcode thing up. You scan the barcode and you're going to see, well, you might, you may or may not be able to see because I'm on a webcam right now and it's, it's kind of bright. So I apologize about that, but you're, you're going to scan it and there's going to be a bunch of information that comes up. So, uh, this book actually right here is coming in at 55,000 rank in books. And if you're wondering what's rank mean, it's a number that Amazon associate, uh, associates to each product that correlates with sales velocity. So uh, the lower the number, if it's, you know, a thousand rank, that's selling a ton of copies a day. If it's a hundred thousand rank, maybe it's selling, you know, a couple copies. If it's a million rank, maybe it's selling a copy every day or two or three, or maybe every month, probably a million, probably once a month or maybe more often. Uh, this sales rank number, nobody knows exactly how many books are selling per day or per month or per whatever duration because Amazon doesn't give you that exact data. All you need to know is the lower the rank, the better. And the more experience you get and the more books you sell and the more categories you sell in, you're going to get acquainted with what's selling, how often and how many, and if I should pick or pass. And we're going to dive into that because I'm going to be scanning a bunch of books with you guys and kind of going over some of the things that I look at. So 
First thing I always look at is the rank. When I scan it, and again, I wish you could see this right now, but you probably can't. This is the Amazon seller app. When I scan this book, I see that it's 55,000 rank. This book is probably selling a couple copies per day. 55,000 rank is amazing in books. Anything under really under six or 700,000 is pretty good when it comes to books because the book category is just gigantic. Once you get under 300,000, you're looking really, really good. Under 100,000, you've got a hot seller and there's a good chance when you ship out the book, it's gonna sell within a day or two. So this is a 55,000 rank. The next thing I like to look at, obviously, maybe even before the rank, is what it's actually selling for. And when you use the Amazon seller app, it'll give you a bunch of data. It'll give you the rank, how fast it sells, the feedback, which is obviously a number that is going to correlate with social proof of how popular the item is. Do people like it? Do they dislike it? So the more feedback, the better. I'd say over 20 feedback is pretty good. This one actually has 44 feedback. And I'm going to stop showing you the phone because it's obvious that you probably can't see it um, due to the glare. But this has 44 feedback, 55,000 rank. And the lowest price is coming in at 2596 FBA. Another thing I want to explain to you, when you scan books, you're going to see a couple different prices. You're gonna see a merchant offer, which essentially is people who aren't shipping to the warehouses, they're just keeping it at their house and shipping directly to the customer. So that's a merchant price. And you're going to see an FBA price. Like I said in the beginning, I want you guys selling FBA because people wanna buy from Amazon sellers that are that are providing the FBA service. You can get more money, they typically sell quicker. Um, customers like it because they can get easy returns, hassle-free returns. Um, and I like selling FBA because I ship it off to the warehouse. They pick it, they pack it, they ship it, they deliver it to the customer. They deal with any customer service if there is any that uh, needs to be attended to. And essentially at the end of the day, I'm just collecting a check. So um, you're gonna see two prices, FBA and merchant. 25 bucks right here. And you're also going to see a gross proceeds button as well, which is going to let you know if I was to buy this book and sell it, how much money would I gross? How much money would I get after fees? And then you take that number and you could subtract whatever you pay for it. So if I was to sell this book for $25.96 on Amazon, I would get $15.70 minus whatever I paid. I'm going to say I paid, actually there's a sticker on it right here. I paid $1. So if I was to ship this in, then minus, you know, maybe 30 or 40 cents for shipping to the warehouse, because you get pretty good discounts when you ship through Amazon and UPS, I would make around 14 or $15 profit on this book, around $14 profit. So $1 investment to $14, not bad at all. Let me go into the comments section, guys, and answer some questions for you. So Louis, the seller says, what's up, Steve? How have you adapted to the recent book related fees on Amazon? I haven't really adapted at all. Um, the only thing that I've done differently compared to, you know, six months ago was instead of buying $8 books, I try to stick to, you know, 10, 11, $12 books or more because, you know, recently the fees have increased on Amazon, but nothing dramatic, just a couple dollars typically on each book. You know, if you're selling books under $20, maybe a little more on the higher end books, but not really anything. I mean, um, you know, I try to, there's actually probably two, two main differences. Number one, I try to keep my minimum price up a little higher. So instead of eight, maybe nine, 10, 11, 12, probably 11 or 12. And also I try to find books that aren't like 4 million, 5 million, 6 million anymore, unless the profits are really big because of the long-term storage fee, which is a fee that Amazon puts in place for books that sit in the warehouse for six months or more. It's, it's, it's a pretty big fee. Uh, it depends on the size and the dimensions and whatnot. So I do try to focus on ranks that are 2 million or less I will take a three or a four if there's no competition, maybe no FBA sellers and the margins are there. Um, but those are probably the two things that I've, that I've done to adapt. So some of these books aren't going to be profitable, but I am going to scan them anyways and break it down for you. So here's a book that um, looks like it was a dollar at Salvation Army. And I am going to take out my app and I am going to hit the scan function. And sometimes, you know what, this is a good example. Sometimes you're not going to be able to scan the barcode because there might not be a barcode on the book. So what do you do in that situation? What do you do when you, you know, 
Steve says, hey, scan the book. You go to scan the book and there's no barcode. What do you do? You have two options. Option number one, use the Amazon seller app. It's the flow functionality to scan the cover. Sometimes the cover will not scan. For some reason on my iPhone, this functionality doesn't seem to work that well. When I had an Android, it worked really nicely. So it's actually not working. So option number two is to go into the app, hit search, go to the search functionality and type in the ISBN, which I'm actually going to do right now with the voice activator. So let me do that. 0571125298. Now that should bring up the book and I think it might have missed the number. 0571125298. Okay, so here's another interesting thing that happens. We're going to be learning together. So I wish that you could see my screen. It's just, will it? Will it zoom in if I bring it in close? Nope, the screen is just too bright. One thing that you need to realize um, and keep in mind is sometimes you'll scan a book, and here's the cover. The cover on the actual app when you scan it, will come up something different. It could be a completely different book, and you want to avoid that. So I actually typed in the ISBN number, and a different cover of this book actually came up. So um, the next option I could do, what I would do is I would actually voice activate the title in and see if something else popped up. So let me try that. The Real Thing by Tom Stoppard. Let's see if I could find this one. So I am going to scan through and I found it. Cool. So I was able to find it. Let's make sure the covers match up. Perfect. So this is going to be an interesting one to analyze. So I'm looking at my app right now. It's 1,299,000. It's not a horrible rank, but it definitely is getting a little higher. Uh, once the rank goes over a million, I'm really looking into how competitive it is. Is there good reviews? What's the profit margins? Because you start to get into that kind of that long tail um, situation where there's a good chance that it might be that it might be sitting. So um, use the lowest one is $15.34. So the app is telling me right now that if I got the book for free, I would make $8.83. So let's say I paid a dollar, I'm down to $7.73 plus some shipping. Let's say I'm at about $7.50 profit. So if I was to send this in to Amazon FBA, I would make $7.50. But you've got to understand that there's no guarantee. So you have to ask yourself, is it worth spending a dollar to send in a 1.2 million ranked book to make $7.50? Uh, in my opinion, I'd say yes. The rank isn't, if it was like a 4 million rank, I would probably say no. Uh, but there's only three FBA sellers. There's 15 merchants, which means uh, I think there's somewhat of a demand here because there's enough people selling it. And there's 16 reviews, four star. So um, I would buy this. That would be a yes. That's how my mind would analyze that deal. Adjust the brightness to your phone. Put it on the lowest. Let's see if that'll work. Let me go and do that for you guys. Okay. Let's see if somebody saved the day. Uh, mm. you know what the problem is, guys? My webcam that I'm using, it's a Logitech 920. It picks up the light like crazy. So um, it just isn't going to work. I apologize for that. Uh, Urban Thriftology is asking, do you sell MF? And if you guys ever see MF, that stands for Merchant Fulfilled. That's just like an eBay seller. You're selling it as a merchant. Uh, if you sell, do you sell Merchant Fulfilled if you can make more money on the book that way versus FBA? I don't. Um, because 99% of the time I could usually always make more money as an FBA seller. Now the fees are a little bit higher, but typically you can yield uh, a higher profit. And even if I was able to make maybe three or $4 more as a merchant, I would still opt into FBA because I'm a super busy guy. I'm running multiple businesses. And the thing that I like most about selling books on Amazon FBA is the ease of use. You just ship it into the warehouse. You know, you put, you put up some upfront work, right? you know, putting it in the box and scanning it in and listing it. I use inventory lab. And once I ship it off, I don't have to worry about it anymore. There's no picking the item when it sells. There's no packing it. There's no shipping it. There's no printing labels. There's no customer service. They deal with it all. So I really like the scalability and the hands-off um, 
type of business model that FBA is. So for that, for that, um, I would say no. Uh, what if there is no sales rank and no FBA sellers? Are you able to create your own price? Yes, you are able to create your own price. If that was my situation, I would probably go into another app that I use called Scoutify and I would scan with that. And the reason I would scan with that is because they have an easy way to be able to jump right over to Camel, 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 which is another third party app that will give you sales history. And It'll kind of give you like a breakdown of what it sold for in the past or what it was listed for if Amazon was in stock. And I could take a look at like the two year, three year, five year history of that book to see where the price has been going. Then in turn, I could, you know, make a really good decision pricing the book. So um, I would love it if it, you know, no rank is kind of a little sketchy because maybe it hasn't sold. Um, but if there's no FBA sellers, that's something that really excites me. If there was no price, I would use Camel, Camel, Camel to price it. So here's another book I'm going to scan right here. Uh, this book is called Fair Trade for All. And I'm going to take out my app and I am going to scan this. And here's another tip, guys. Certain barcodes, certain barcodes you can't scan. Um, this one starts with a two, two, eight, zero, zero. I, I believe if you use FBA scan, it will scan it, but the Amazon seller app will actually not recognize certain barcodes. So in that example, I would have to scan the cover if that doesn't work, because again, my iPhone for some reason just doesn't pick up covers very well. Um, I would just type it in. You could either type it or voice it in. Fair trade for all, how trade can promote development. And the iPhone actually does a pretty good job at um, accurately spelling and, and picking up sounds and, and voice and whatnot. So here is a book that is a 1.7 million rank. So the rank is getting high. I'm, I'm going to look for, if I was to buy this, I'd be looking for at least something that was selling for probably $15. Um, I'd like to see some feedback, 10 plus would be really good. Uh, but let's take a look. So uh, the feedback's 14 feedback, four out of five stars. So that's a check. Uh, 1.7 million rank, it's getting a little high. But looking at the used prices, it's actually starting at $7 FBA, which means if I was to get this book for free and sell it without any shipping fees, I would actually only make nine cents. So I would pass on this book all day long. You've gotta make sure that there's profit in the book. Um, you don't want to just get in the habit of just sending in books for the for the heck of it. Joel is asking, do slow moving ASIN books ever get out of that category or are they like that forever? I don't know the answer to that. Um, Joel is uh, referencing a little, um, it's like a little orange uh, title that pops up saying slow moving ASIN. And this is something that Amazon implemented over the last year trying to get FBA sellers not to send in ASINs that don't sell extremely well. Now this system isn't 100% accurate. I still send in those books uh, every now and then just depending on the rank and the profit margins and whatnot. But I'm not sure if it ever comes out of that slow ASIN category. I'm assuming it probably would if, if sales picked up. Hey, what's going on thrift school? Hey, I got you, man. I'll hold your hand through this whole thing. Uh, blood. I HD says, in my opinion, books are very difficult. I'm from Germany and I tried my look, luck. Books with a rank of over 100K, almost 85% in warehouses for me. Books are lucrative if you've got a mass inventory. Um, I don't know if things are different in um, in Germany. I don't. You're you're probably selling on the German Germany Amazon, so it's probably different. So I'm not sure exactly how the book market is over there, but um, anything 100,000 or 200,000 last sell pretty much like within a couple of days. In America. So I think it's maybe a little different of a market out there. I'm not sure if you're selling on Amazon.com or not, but it's certainly not the case out here in, in the States. Uh, Mark is asking, would you ever send in a book that is new? That's new if it looks brand new, uh, bind, still stiff when open. So I think what Mark is saying is, would you, would you sell a book as new if it's not like shrink wrapped, but it looks brand new and it looks perfect. Uh, a lot of books that are sold brand new are actually sold without like any wrapping or in a box or anything like that. So I've actually done it, but it's probably one out of every like 
300 books because most books I have to sell them as used because it has like a little nick or it has some writing or has a little issue. Uh, but if it looks brand new, if it's a hundred percent perfect mint, then yeah, you could sell it as new, but I like to go with the motto of under promise over deliver. So, um, you know, uh, you know, take, take that with a grain of salt. Be very careful doing that. Uh, Chas is asking, I am so rubbish at this game. When I scan books in the shop, the price looks good. Then when I get home, it seems the price is, uh, something in low cost. You just got to be careful when you're scanning books. Um, you know, there's been times I've scanned books and I was like, wow, this is worth 30 bucks. And I brought it home and I'm like, wow, it's only worth five. What did I do? And I was actually looking at the new price instead of the used price. So you got to definitely be careful. All right, let's scan another book. So I'm actually going to scan this book that I found at a garage sale the other day. I believe I paid, it was either a quarter or a dollar or 50 cents. It was somewhere in there. The most I paid for this was a dollar. Um, I got this book when I was out with my buddy Tim Fisk the other day. I think I showed you guys this in my garage sale haul. One dollar. So let's see if the price has changed. When I looked at it the other day, it was actually $47. Let's see if the price changed, which... It could have went up. It could have went down, just depending on supply and demand. Uh, scanning this book in, it's a 469,000 rank. That is terrific. That's an excellent rank. The book category is only getting bigger and larger and more extensive, which means higher ranked books aren't considered as bad. Um, you know, there might have been a time where four or five hundred thousand might have been a little higher. Nowadays, it's a pretty darn good rank. Uh, used 47.52, so it looks like the price hasn't changed. Four and a half stars, 25 reviews. Uh, merchants are coming in at 39. FBA is coming in at 47, which is pretty normal. Typically, FBA sellers are going to be a little higher than um, merchant sellers. There is a CD that comes with the book, which is included. It's actually a DVD, so we'll always check if if a DVD or CD comes with it, make sure it's in there, or if not, you're gonna have to disclose that. Uh, but paid a buck, I'm gonna say, after fees, I'm gonna make $34 um, profit, minus you know probably 50 cents to ship and the dollar that I paid. So I'm gonna make about $32 profit on a $1 investment. I mean, where can you get returns like that other than selling books? I mean, that's why I love selling books. That's why I at least preach to people to learn how to do it on a basic level. You know, maybe you're into selling clothing like me. I, I, I definitely prefer selling clothing. Uh, maybe you like selling electronics or video games. That's fine, but at least learn the skill set of how to analyze a book, right? Like I said, Amazon seller app, scan it. You're going to want to look at a few things. Number one, the sales rank. Anything under a million is going to be pretty decent. Even a million to two million, you know, it's a little higher, but if the margins are there, you can buy it. Look at the feedback. That's not very important, but if it has 20, 30, 40, 50 feedback, that's really good social proof. Uh, you're going to want to take a look at what it's selling for. Um, if you're a merchant seller, obviously you're going to look at the merchant price, which there's two of them. There's a merchant price and an FBA price. If you're an FBA seller, you're going to want to look at the FBA price. Um, and then that's about it. Take a look at the app. It'll tell you how much money you're going to make after everything, minus off your shipping, which is typically for me about 50 cents uh, per unit here in Connecticut, sometimes less. And, uh, you know, minus off your cost of goods sold. And there you go. I mean, $32 profit on this right here. I mean, that's pretty cool. Uh, New Frontier Business has picked up 13 boxes of books um, at a yard sale back in January for $20. Total ROI, return on investment from Amazon after fees, was over $4,200, and most that most that has been returned. That's my most money that's ever been returned. My best book flip, hands down. That's awesome. Frontier Business, you killed it on that one. What's up, Lucky? Good to see you. Uh, Lewis says you have to check average rank, current, and rank is misleading. Um, I never have done that. Um, I know there's a way to check the average rank. I believe that's with FBA scan, but I've never really done that. Um, you know, it might be misleading to an extent, but I've never really found the need to look at the, the current rank. I guess if I had that number at my disposal all the time, I would use it. But with the Amazon seller app, you're, um, you're typically not going to have it. And I don't think it's super misleading because all because a book sells doesn't mean it's going to drop to like a 2000 rank. If it's selling all the time, the rank's going to typically be lower. I, I don't think that a book that's 2 million rank, if it sells once, it's not going to drop down to 20,000 rank. It might drop down to like a half a million or a million or 400,000. That's just my opinion. I could be wrong. Um, 
but yeah, here's another book right here. Let's scan this, Life After College. So this book right here, the rank is 947,000. So it's not a bad rank. It's not amazing, but you know, I definitely want to click into it seeing that. Uh, reviews, there's only four reviews, five star. It's not that great, but still I'm, I'm curious. Uh, I see that the new price is coming in at $29.99. Amazon is selling it and used. The lowest price is $18. If I was to sell this book, I would make $9.32 minus whatever I paid for it. I see the Goodwill sticker right there, $2. So now I'm down to $7.32 after shipping fees. I probably make about $7 profit, uh, granted that I sell it for $18. Now, speaking of misleading, I, there's one thing that I want you guys to take a look at when you're scanning books. Sometimes the FBA price will be uh, inaccurate or misleading to an extent. And let me explain. So, you always want to take a look at what the new price is, and you also want to take a look at what your competition selling it at for merchants. So for this book right here, there's 22 merchants selling it. The lowest is 594. FBA is tripling that at 18. That makes me a little bit nervous, and the reason is it's because when the gap gets too big between the merchant and the FBA seller, you've got to ask yourself from a customer standpoint, at what point are they willing? you know, to say, you know what, I'm just going to order from a merchant. I'm going to take the slow shipping. I'm going to take having to deal with possible customer service and I'm going to save myself a few bucks. At what point are they going to, you know, put their hand up and say, okay, stop. That's FBA. That's just getting a little ridiculous. So you always want to consider what the FBA and the merchants are looking at. Some people will say it doesn't matter what merchants are. I just ignore them. But there is a time where the merchants could be at five or six dollars and then there's three FBA sellers at like 50. And you've got to ask yourself, really, you know, are you going to get that? I've gotten it before, but there's other times that I, that I hadn't gotten it. And then competition comes in and they, they bring it to more of an equilibrium. So um, always take a look at the merchant price just to kind of get an idea of where the market really stands. <laughs> I thought that was a shopping cart next to me. No, these are just some books, some books that I'm shipping in, uh, others that I'm not shipping in. So I'm going to make a pile of the ones that I am and then I'm not. Uh, some of these books, again, were just laying around the house. Others were uh, returns from FBA that I actually took out of the warehouse because they never sold. Um, and the price kind of deteriorated. Uh, let's see. I'm wrapped up a little bit here. Okay. Uh, Ron wants to know, how do you rate a book when there is only one or two and they are priced at like 150, but you have a feeling they are BS prices? How do you evaluate that book and why do people do that? Uh, well, there's a couple things I'm going to look at. I'm going to I'm going to look at the rank. Um, if the rank is really, really doing well, like under 500,000, then I'm going to feel more confident in those high prices. Um, I'm also going to look at the new price. So if you're selling a used book, and the new price is at like 35 and Amazon's selling it. And then you look at used and FBA's at like 150. That's BS, right? Um, so I look at the new, uh, I look at the rank, but even most importantly, what I'll look at, like I was mentioning before, is I'll take a look at where the merchants are. You know, if there's two FBA sellers at 150 and then the merchants are down at like 11, I honestly think that's BS. There's another thing you can do. You can use that third party. Uh, website I was mentioning, camelcamelcamel.com, and you can take a look at the the, the sales pricing history. Uh, but those are the things that I'm that I typically do. Another thing I do is I can look at the um, the eBay prices. Now eBay and Amazon may be in completely different worlds at times, um, but again, it can give you kind of a reference point. If you know, if I see it's at 150, and then on eBay they're selling for 80 or 90 bucks. There's a good chance you might be able to get 150 on Amazon. Believe it or not, um, you could typically get a lot more on Amazon. Not always, but hopefully that helped. So Mark says picked up a pop up, sold on eBay for 150. It's pretty crazy right there. Uh, Camel, Camel, Camel works for books. I use it every now and then. All right, here's another book, My Fight for a New Taiwan. This girl is, uh, she's fighting for Taiwan. So let's take a look and scan this. All right, so I scanned it. First thing I see is the book is ranked at 1.8 million. So it's a bit high. What I'm going to want to see in order to ship this in FBA is probably a price at at least $15. Um, it looks like I paid two bucks for this. I'm not sure why I did. It just right now, I haven't even seen what it's selling for, but I, it better be selling for 15 or more or else 
it was kind of a stupid decision when I bought it. Maybe the price changed. Um, $14.99 is the lowest price. There's two FBA sellers. The merchants, there's 13 merchants at $13.59. So $14.99 for FBA is a pretty uh, low price, you know. Maybe I would have shot a little higher, but it's a 1.8 million rank, only four reviews. If I sell it at $14.99 FBA, I'm going to get $6.76 $6 cents back, which means I would make around $4 profit, which is a 200% ROI. You know, if I could go back in time, I probably wouldn't have bought this. I'm not sure what I was thinking. I've got some books that were kind of sitting around for a little while, so the price may have deteriorated a bit. Um, but if I was to see this at a thrift store right now, I would probably pass just because there's just not enough meat on the bone. The rank is getting a little higher. There's not a ton of reviews. Um, you know, if I was a higher volume bookseller, I'd probably pop on this, but I've got it. You know, I'll ship it in since I already have it. Uh, but that's that right there. So these mass market books don't typically do the best. Uh, these little small ones right here that are usually priced at like $9.99 or $12.99 um, MSRP. Uh, this is a novel, Queen of the, the, the Tearling, $1 from Goodwill. Let's see what's going on here. I'm going to scan that. Rank is 16000 which is tremendous. The lowest price is $8.28. Uh, I may have gotten this on a half off day. So I want to say I paid 50 cents for this. I'm, I'm thinking I paid 50 cents for it. But even at a dollar, 16,000 rank, guys, you send this in, it's gone. Just like that. Yeah, it's gone. Right when it hits the warehouse, it's gone if if you're you know competitively priced typically. Um, if I was to sell this, I'd make a dollar 25 profit. So again, you know. Some people might pass on that. I'm, again, I'm not really sure why I bought it. I, I typically would be looking for at least two or three dollars profit to send something in, even if it's super quick, just because my time is very limited um, running multiple businesses. But if if this is your full time gig and you're a high volume bookseller, I'm sure you'd pop on this all day long because it's it's literally guaranteed money. You know, considering it doesn't get returned, sixteen thousand rank is is really really good. I'll ship that in since I already have it. Here's a book that I popped on for $2.20 half off um, at a consignment store. So a lot of people talk about thrift stores. They talk about garage sales, flea markets, you know, buying uh, lots from Craigslist, let go, uh, offer up, but not many people talk about consignment shops. I actually do really, really well at a couple of my local consignment shops. I don't pop in every day. I don't usually even pop in every week, maybe once every couple of weeks just to see what's going on over there because there's like little to no competition. Uh, but here's a book called Becoming Vegan. Becoming Vegan. Um, I got this book a while ago. I never shipped it in. Um, I actually went through a move lately and some inventory kind of got stuck. But anyways, long story short, uh, this book is actually selling for $13 right now, 132,000 rank, 34 reviews. So the rank is tremendous, uh, doing really well. The reviews 34, that's excellent at $2. I'll make about $3 profit on this, which is a little over a hundred percent ROI, not huge money. You're not going to get rich. You're not going to be able to, uh, you know, become a millionaire selling books like this. But again, if you're looking to make you know a couple bucks extra a month, a couple hundred dollars, a couple thousand bucks, these are the types of books that you're going to want to buy and put in your cart because they add up. They do. Over a week, over a month, these little two, three dollar flips, they definitely add up. And when you're selling as an FBA seller, it doesn't take much work and effort to get this thing out. It really doesn't. It's just a matter of scanning it, setting a price. There's really no prep. There's really no cleaning. There's really nothing you have to do. You don't have to poly bag it. You don't have to stretch wrap it. Essentially, all you do is you just print out a little F and SKU, which is the little label that Amazon's going to want you to stick on the back of the barcode to cover it. So it's a little label you stick on. It's called an F and SKU. It's got its own proprietary number. So Amazon can identify the product and they'll know how much you have it listed for. Stick it on there, you ship it in a box. You, you put 20, 30 books in a box and you ship it off. So, you know, this will take very, very little effort to make, you know, $3. And if you're out at a consignment shop or a thrift store and you see a book that's ranked well and there's a couple bucks, you know, a little meat on a bone, take it. So, what's up, Bonafide? Uh, Chris is saying it's all about the ROI and that rank, zero prep. Exactly. Bonafide is saying you either want easy money or you don't. FBA is an amazing platform for stuff like low-ranked books. Exactly. Thanks for stopping by, Chris. Good to see you. Hopefully, you're enjoying 
what I probably believe to be lovely weather in Austin, Texas. Here it's it's a really dark, rainy day. It's it's not fun. Um, Jennifer Leland, what's going on? There were zippy zi there were zippy sales around me today. Plus, it was raining. Lame. It's raining over here too. Mark is asking Steve, what do you think of library sales? I just can't see how you can find good books to flip uh, if there are so many book scouters. Believe it or not. Even if there's a lot of competition, there's still so many books to find. I mean, think of garage sales. You know, when you go garage sailing, there's like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of uh, resellers there. But if you walk into, you know, a community yard sale or there's like 200 yard sales in your area, they can't get to every single yard sale. And plus, it's it's a matter of time. You know, it's timing, just like at a thrift store or at a garage sale or at a flea market, just a matter of getting there at the right time, the right place at the right time. So I encourage everybody to get into situations that are highly competitive. And the reason why I, ask, why I say that is because if there's competition, that means there's money there. Bottom line, if there's nobody there, there's no money to be made. So there's a bunch of people going typically because there's money to be made. There's, there's opportunities there. So, um, you know, prepare yourself, get yourself a good scanning device, whether it's just the Amazon seller app, which will work fine, or getting yourself something like a scan fob or um, a handheld scanner, which essentially is a piece of equipment that is connected to your phone through Bluetooth. You hold it in your hand and you can scan. It's it's a laser. Um, go get prepared, have your app ready, understand you know what books sell and go and scan and you'll find books. There are so many profitable books at library, sa uh, library sales uh, but as mark mentioned there is definitely a lot of competition but you know wherever there's opportunities they're gonna there's gonna be competition garage sales thrift stores flea markets Craigslist you know it's it's when there's no competition that you want to get worried right Hassan says I asked reason resells this on a live broadcast he did a week ago what happens when someone is not selling what do you do and how much does it cost to destroy your stock um, so I think what Hassan is asking is if you have a book that doesn't sell um, and it's just sitting in there and maybe you got hit with a long-term storage fee and it's a year and it's just in there and it's not doing anything, um, what do you do? Well, you, there's two options and um, there's either you can have it destroyed, which I forgot how much it is for your book to be destroyed. Is it? I think it's um, 15 cents or 20 cents for you for them to destroy the book. So you can actually go into the back end of your Amazon account, uh, click into that actual SKU, and you can have it destroyed. So I think that's is it 15 or 20 cents, or is it 30 cents? I'm not sure. Um, I just had a bunch of books destroyed myself and sent back. 15 cents, Eric is saying. Thank you, Eric. So you can get your item destroyed, which did they actually destroy it or did they sell it? Who knows? Who really cares? Uh, but 15 cents to destroy the book. They'll, they'll take it out of your inventory. Um, and your second option is to have them send it back to you. So you can have them send the book back to you. They'll take it out of your inventory and they'll ship it back to you. And I believe that's 30 cents per item, right? 30 cents or is it 50 cents? Did, did, the, um, did the fee go up? I thought it used to be 30 cents. Anyways, Eric's saying it's 50 cents to have it returned to you. So those are your two options. Get it destroyed or get it sent back to you. Most of the time, I'll just have it destroyed. Um, let's take a look. Here is a book called Leadership Lessons of the White House. So, you know, books like this are interesting. It's, you know, a, a political slash business leadership book right here. Um, interesting niche, uh, almost like a sub niche in a sense, right? You've got the business and then it's diving into, you know, leadership and whatnot. Anything like that, I like to scan. So I'm going to scan this right now. I'm not sure if this is a profitable book or I may have just gotten this for myself. A lot of times I'll find books that are interesting for a dollar or two and you know, I'll skim through them a little bit and, you know, donate them back. Uh, so this is coming in at 1.2 million. So 1.2 million isn't the worst rank. It's not the best. It's going to sit for a little while, typically. Uh, 31 reviews on this, five stars. So that's excellent. The merchants are coming in, and there's a lot of merchants. There's 40, there's 40 merchant sellers at 741, and then there's nine FBA sellers, the lowest one coming in at 1995. So I'm fairly confident you could probably get 1995. Um, I wouldn't be surprised over a month period if it doesn't sell, the price goes down to 15 or 16, maybe less. Um, as people start to adjust their pricing and then repricers start to fight each other, um, which is a software that people use to reprice their items automatically. Wouldn't it be surprised if this drops in price 
if this doesn't start selling a little quicker. But if it did sell for $19.95, I'd walk with about $10.98. And, uh, you know, minus cost of goods, I paid two bucks for this, so I'd make about seven or eight dollars. Um, decent book, you know, not the best. It's one of those things, risk and reward. Are you willing to risk two dollars to quadruple your money? I'm willing to do that because you could lose on a couple and score on one and it, it'll be worth your time. Not the best book, you know, could maybe pass on it. Wouldn't be a big deal. All right. So here are a couple items that actually came up in the book category. I guess you can consider them books. They're not really books. They're note cards. Um, I bought these from a garage sale yesterday. Yesterday. Uh, last Saturday. These are the, the Mosby's uh, note cards. One's on fluids and elect uh, electrolytes, and the other one's on pharmacology. These are both brand new. I love brand new. Let's scan this one. This one is coming up. Is it in the book category? Yes. So this one's a 42,000 rank. Spectacular. Probably sell within the first couple of days. Brand new Amazon's at $20.90. I'd probably undercut them by 20 or 30 cents uh, because most people are going to go through Amazon.com. Plus they're going to get the buy box. So um, probably. Uh, I'd probably price this around $20. $13.50 I'd walk away with. I paid a dollar. You know, a dollar to twelve fifty profit. Can't beat that. Here's another one that I found at a garage sale for a dollar. Scanning this in, 131,000 rank. You know, not as good as the other one at you know 42,000, but still a very decent seller. Um, merchants are starting at 1294. There are no FBA sellers, so I'd probably come in around 17 or 18, 59 reviews, and I would probably make about you know eight or nine dollars profit as well. So these things are really good to be on the lookout for. Uh, these Mosby note cards, brand new garage sale find. Paid two bucks for the lot. Going to make, you know, 20 bucks, 10 times my money on that. Got to love that. Let me take a drink and answer some questions. Hassan, you are welcome. Potatoes run the world. Can you make profit shipping books and clothes outside your country? Uh, I'm not sure about that. April is asking, if you are just starting out with lower volume in the beginning, should you start as a merchant instead of an FBA so that your profits on each book are higher? I don't think your profits are going to necessarily be higher as a merchant. I think your profits would actually be higher as an FBA seller. Now, I'm not a merchant seller, um, and I haven't been a merchant seller for a couple of years. So with the new fee structure, it might make sense. You might make a couple dollars more on some books, possibly. I'm not exactly sure. So you're going to have to research that. I'm an FBA seller. but it's going to take a lot of your time. It's going to take a lot more time to store the books, to process the books, to find the books, to pick them, pack them, ship them, to deal with customer service, to drop them off at the post office multiple times. You might even have one book that you have to go drop it off and it's a $2 profit. So I would say go FBA. I would start with Amazon FBA. You know, is there going to be a little bit more of a learning curve, you know, learning how to, you know, uh, you know, list your items on FBA and how to, you know, print out the, the, the multiple labels, the F and SKUs, and then outside of the box label and weighing them all and doing different things. Yeah, but there's so many tutorials online. The, the point of this video is to kind of break down a lot of the basics for you. This, this video is really geared towards helping the beginners, building up your confidence, and then take this information and you know start to watch some other videos. There's full length FBA tutorial videos that'll teach you from step A to step B to step C, You know how to list it, how to price it, how to ship it, how to print the labels, all that. So don't let that worry you. You'll get to that when you get to that step. Um, but I would go FBA. So we have 119 people watching live right now. I want to thank you guys for watching. I'm going to answer some more questions, guys. Um, if you guys are enjoying this video, be sure to hit the like button. And also, I want to mention, guys, um, you know, if you want to learn more about this stuff, go on YouTube. There's definitely a lot of videos out there. Um, if you're looking for a course to take that will teach you the process, unfortunately, I don't have a course on it. Um, I do have quite a few videos about it, but my good friend Jim Pickens actually has a course on on it um, and you can see that course learn more about it in the description rakeandprofit.com forward slash book selling 101 that's rakeandprofit.com forward slash book selling 101 and that's a full-fledged video course um, 
tons of videos. I actually made a review video about it and uh, was promoting it uh, about a month ago. And um, it's a really, really good course. I've gone through the course. It's not only for beginners, but it can actually help you if you're an intermediate and an advanced seller. I mean, it goes through step by step by step. If you're new and you're overwhelmed, take that course. It's under $100, guys. That course could definitely go for three to $400. So um, check that out in the description. That's definitely my number one course that I recommend. And I'll never make a book selling course because I won't be able to beat that one. It's It's got everything you need. So um, definitely a trusted partner of Rake and Profit is Jim Pickens. So uh, Decent James says, uh, Jim Pickens is the freaking man. You know, he actually has his warehouse very close to where I live. And um, I'm going to be going there. Hopefully within the next week or so, uh, we've been trying to connect to check out his warehouse. So he's on pace to do a million dollars this year selling books. So he definitely knows what he's doing. So if you want to learn from somebody who has experience, check out that link in the description. Uh, Samantha's asking, what's going on, Samantha? Good to see you. Do you scan every book or are there genres you avoid because they are generally uh, generally don't do as well? So I stick with nonfiction. Um, so, you know, I, I stick with like the textbooks and the nonfiction and, you know, the niches, uh, you know, whether it's horseback riding or vegans or uh, yoga or meditation, there's a million different niches, but I stick with nonfiction. Uh, the number one books I like to go for, are obviously like the school books and the textbooks. Everybody knows about that. If you're at a garage sale and you see them, scan them. I try to find textbooks that are more current because after a couple of years, they, they, they just aren't really worth that much money because you, new issues and volumes come out and the uh, the book selling business is a is a pretty nasty business of its own these poor school school uh, these students have to pay like two hundred dollars for a book and the next semester they make a new one it's the same thing and they have to get a new book it's crazy um, but it is what it is <clears throat> yeah in the course, Mark is mentioning, he explains uh, the, tr the the triggers. So if you use an app, there's a more advanced app than Amazon Seller app called FBA Scan. And that app actually allows you to set up triggers. So essentially you could be wearing like a headset or something or uh, headphones and you can have it hooked up to your phone. And when you're scanning, you don't even have to look at the actual screen. It'll actually have a trigger set. So rules that are set um, that tell you to buy or not. So it might go to ding which means buy, and then it might go beep, which means pass. And you can go into this app and you can set up these triggers, these rules, this algorithm in a sense that'll tell you to buy or pass, which is freaking just like, it's a little more advanced. I know a lot of you guys are probably new, um, but in Jim Pickens' course, he does talk about that. So if you are interested, check out the link in the description. Um, do you think the monthly fee for FBA scan is worth the money? I, I definitely do. The one thing I like, if you're brand new, I would just stick with the Amazon seller app. Keep your, you know, keep your cost down as much as possible. The only thing I honestly would spend my money on is that is the is the book selling course because that'll just that'll help you to avoid so many mistakes. But besides taking that course, I would say stick with um stick with the Amazon seller app for free. You know, um I would probably even not even buy the uh, $40 a month uh, professional plan with Amazon until you get to that volume. So I would just buy the um, Amazon seller app. If you have an iPhone and Android, just stick with that. I wouldn't even get a handheld scanner at this point. And then I would just keep my cost down as much as possible until I start to make some money, you know, $100, $300, $500. Maybe I make a thousand bucks over a couple months period when I'm new. And then I look into, you know, getting some softwares and some nice bells and whistles and a handheld scanner because you want to build up your momentum. A lot of people quit this business in reselling. They get excited, they get pumped up and it's not hard, right? Like I'm not the smartest guy in the world. Like I'm really not. And you know, I'm not the most motivated person in the world. Um, there's times where I'm lazy and I don't feel like doing it, but if you're consistent and you stick with this game, you can make it work. But the, the sad thing is most people quit so soon. So keep your costs down. Um, the one thing I like about FBA scan, uh, circling back is that you can actually download the database because you know, some thrift stores and some locations you go to, you'll go to scan a book and it won't go through. And you're like, what's going on? Like you see this, uh, you know, this Mosby note card, uh, and you're like trying to scan it and you're like, oh my God, what is it? I can't tell it won't go through your internet. Isn't working. Some places have really weak internet. And what are you doing in that situation when you can't scan? 
Da-ding! FBA Scan has a downloadable database that you could download before you go in, maybe you know an hour before when you're at your house. Download the whole Amazon catalog. It'll have all the prices, all the information, and you could scan outside or off the internet. So that's what I really like most about the, um, the FBA Scan app. <sighs> that's good. Um, kind of losing my voice, guys. So I'm going to answer a couple more questions. And try to help you guys guys out as much as possible. If you guys are enjoying this video, uh, be sure to hit the like button. I would definitely appreciate that. Uh, I'm here to add value to you guys and help you out as much as possible. So if you have any questions re regarding selling books, do not hesitate to ask. Uh, Potatoes runs the world is asking are recipe books popular? You know the good, the, the old Gordon Ramsay books, etc. Uh, most like mass produced books aren't going to do very well. It's the weird, odd, unique. Um, it's the books that people don't really know much about, or maybe there was only a, you know, not a ton of copies uh, created. Those are the books that do well. I've done well with recipe books. Um, you know, I actually last year I went to a um, a garage sale. I might have I might have shared this on Periscope. I'm not sure, but I found like tons of books on like grilling and barbecue and vegan and like they were really really high quality recipe books you know the recipe books where you open it up and like the pages are like laminated really nice and the quality of pictures are just like holy mackerel like I just want to like eat everything in this book I found like 30 of them at a garage sale and I sent them all in and they were all selling for like 18 20 22 so uh, most of them do um, excuse me what am I trying to say uh, most of those did really well, but in general, most recipe books I find don't really do that well. You just got to find the right ones. Do you know if you can use Inventory Lab to list as a merchant fulfilled? I'm not sure. I use it through FBA. I would just send them a support ticket and ask them. Uh, Mark says, I finally pulled the trigger to get a handhold scanner, Opticon 2002, still just using the Amazon seller app. That'll definitely help, um, you know, to speed up the listing process for you. You know, when it comes to selling books, uh, if I could give you guys one tip, if you want to make more money, you've got to scan more books. You know, you're not going to go into a thrift store and scan five books and find a book. Typically not, unless you just hit a jackpot. Typically, you're going to have to scan 20 books, 15 books, 25 books, sometimes 40 books to find a good one. So if you're going one by one, like using this phone, it could take forever and it might not be worth your time. So that's why you have to have patience at first and really hone in on your strategy, whether it's garage sales or getting to know one thrift store and you don't have to scan all the books every time. Like for example, my mother, she goes to the same savers every single day. And when she goes in, like for example, if I was to go in there, I have to scan all the books because I don't know what's been there and what hasn't, what's new. She knows every single book in that freaking finance section and the textbook section. So when she goes in, she could already pinpoint, okay, these are new books right here. And she scans them and she could be in and out within 15 minutes to make 50 bucks, 80 bucks, a hundred bucks. We went today, she found 10 books, 10 books today. There was a lot of Islam books and Middle Eastern books and religious books. So you can find all different types of books. Um, but the name of the game, if you if you don't memorize your bookstore, which you know some bookstores you're not going to be able to because there's just going to be millions of books. But this one's somewhat small, the, the business, entrepreneurship, religious section. Um, you're going to have to scan, scan, scan. So having a handheld scanner will allow you to scan more books, which in turn will allow you to find more books you know, at a, at a faster rate. Uh, Carol wants me to do a video with Jim Pickett's in the warehouse with him. I actually had him shoot a video for me. So I'm going to link those videos up down below. Jim Pickett's actually shot a video in his warehouse, kind of showing off a little bit. It wasn't like the most high quality video. So we apologize about that. Uh, but you could definitely check that out over the last month. Me and him, we shot a few videos. So you can check that out and check out the review of that course. Uh, yeah, you're going to have to download the seller. Um, you're going to have to download. You're going to have to sign up for an Amazon seller account. Uh, just having an Amazon account is actually different. So go to the Amazon seller central. Uh, you can Google that and, and sign up for account. You're going to have to put in, you know, your banking, credit card, all that stuff. Uh, Bobby Moons. What's up, Bobby? Good to see you. How important do you think it is to retain the book names you scan versus just scanning and checking prices? I don't think it's important to memorize the books. I mean, you will over time, you'll learn, you know, certain books do well. Um, but it's just a numbers game. It's analytics. So I would just get in the, the mode of just 
scanning as fast as possible. What about Bible books? I have sold a few Bible books. I'm not an expert with Bible books, but I know that I've sold a couple of them. Very cool, Mark. Congratulations, man, for getting the scanner. Samantha says, great video as always. You're successfully turning me towards doing FBA. I've been on the fence, uh, but I'm going to start. You should definitely do it, Samantha. You know, there's... um. You know, here's the thing, you know, you don't have to be a full-time reseller to sell on Amazon. You don't have to be a full-time reseller to sell books or clothing on eBay or electronics. But my best, one of my best pieces of advice that I can give you that I wish that I would have known is learn as much as you possibly can. Because when you go in a thrift store, if you only know one thing, like maybe you only know clothes, it's really easy to get skunked. It's really easy to go in there, just look for clothes. Maybe you're looking for Pendleton's or Ralph Lauren's or Brooks Brothers or Vineyard Vines or Zegna's or Canales. You're looking for these certain brands that you know. It's easy to get skunked. It's easy to go in there, especially if you're traveling from city to city and state to state, which I've done in the past. It's easy to go into a thrift store or a garage sale looking for one particular type of product and it gets skunked. But I've learned over the years, if I learn about electronics and if I learn about books and I learn about clothes and jeans and ties and hats and you know puzzles and board games and video games, the more I educate myself, glassware, vintage wear, you know, antiques, the more I know, the more I grow and the more opportunities are present to me to be able to make money. So, you know, it's it's becoming harder and harder for me to go to a garage sale and leave empty handed. It's becoming a challenge to go to a thrift store and not leave with something. So you've got to continue to learn. You don't have to go full blast, you know, 200,000 square foot warehouse to get into books. You know, again, my mother, she's over 60 years old. She works a full-time job. And sorry for putting your age, mama, on blast, but so many people think, you know, I'm too old to do this or I'm too young to do this. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter your gender. It doesn't matter how smart you are with technology or anything. Anybody can do this. Learn how to sell books. Learn how to make $50 a month selling books. Learn how to flip, you know, jackets and sell clothing on eBay. Learn all these things because these are skill sets that nobody can take away from you. You know, it's 2017. You need to continue to learn. You need to adapt. You need to educate yourself. You need to build skills that will bring value to the marketplace. And learning how to sell books is another skill that you can have in your in your tool shed that nobody can ever take away from you. And I could guarantee you right now, if you learn how to sell books, you're going to be presented with many opportunities over the next few years in your whole entire life where if you didn't study this, you didn't learn it, you're literally just leaving money on the table. I'm so glad I learned clothing. I'm so glad that I learned the basics of video games and board games and Amazon FBA and eBay and you know Craigslist because what would I do with all these bikes that I find locally? So learn continue to educate, continue to grow. It's not a competition between you and me and you and Mark and you and the next guy and you and Greg or you and Heather. Who cares what the next guy's doing? Who cares what the competition is doing? Who cares what the next guy at the library sale is doing? Who cares what your favorite YouTuber is doing? It's a competition between you and the man or woman in the mirror. Keep improving yourself each and every day. Take the next step forward. Keep learning because these are skills that you're going to acquire and you're going to be able to hold on to your whole entire life. I met a guy the other day at the Connecticut meetup. His name was Ian. I believe he's 18 or 19 years old. He doesn't have a job. He buys and sells video games. He buys and sells video games. You know what I was doing at that age? I was, I was at Toys R Us in the warehouse back there with a sapphire destroying their inventory system. I had no clue what I was doing, you know, and I was miserable. I was working at gas stations. I was delivering pizza. I had a jackass boss telling me what to do. I had to wait my whole entire week to just get $150. This kid's going in and finding Mario games and flipping them for $40, $50 profit. It's just, it's crazy. 2017, it is not 1999 anymore, guys. There is so much money to be had out there, but you've got to take it. You've got to grab it. You can't sit back and just watch these videos and just learn and take all this information in and think that's going to do anything for you. It's not. It's the people who take what they learn and they take action and they make a crap load of mistakes. Don't be scared to make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes. That's why you know I always preach networking with people going to meetups, taking courses, trying to do whatever you can to reduce the risk because you're going to make mistakes. It's it's bottom line, but don't be scared. It's normal. I've made a million mistakes. All the people that I have ever talked to who are successful, they've made a million mistakes. So 
just go make it happen. Uh, appreciate you guys watching. If you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to smash that like button. If you guys want to learn more about selling books, I've got a bunch more videos on my channel. There's quite a few other YouTubers who've got some great videos on books as well. So check that out. There's a lot of blogs. Check out the course in the description by my good buddy, Jim Pickens. That's rakenprofit.com forward slash book selling 101. It's a great course. I think you guys will enjoy that. Uh, but yeah, anything else I can do for you guys, let me know. Until then, have a great day. Keep on picking and making that money and I'll see you soon. Bye.